Now, I'll tell you what the Lord said to me early this week. He said, Martin and Martha are going to come up and exhort the church and pray. And Martha just slid down in her seat. I think she's still there. I can't tell. But that's what the Lord said. He's given you a word that you don't even know he's given you. It's right here. It's going to be powerful, not only for the church, but for you guys. Hallelujah. Uh, get the smelling salts out. I think they've both slid down. Said, Come on. Come on up. Come on. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give man a praise this morning? Yeah. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, boy, it's so funny. So, you know what? I don't know what people do without Jesus. Yeah. You know what? We've... Um, Family's been through a tough time these last 10 months. And, uh, but in all of that, your strength really comes from the Lord. Yes, it does. And um, the Lord just spoke, you know, it's just so funny. Hallelujah. Why is it funny? Because you called me up. I here. know that. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit bothered me for Monday, and I'm off on Monday, <laughs> I knew something was coming. Go ahead. So the Lord just talked to me this week, and I was just... I was in the Word this week, and it's just been a tough time in the Lord. And it's just been a tough, tough time for the family. But there is a strength that is supernatural. Yes. When you begin to pray in the Spirit, yeah. I am telling you the angelic host of heaven takes yes. attention to the needs of yes. His people. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me. I was reading in the book of Mark. Four. And um, no, no, I'm sorry, sir. I tried. But it spoke of the word, it spoke of the man that was laying on a cot. And his friends came and Jesus was, was in the house. And you needed to get into the house. Mm. And the Bible says that when they came to the house, the press was around it. Mm-hmm. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you've got to get through the press. Amen. And the Bible says that, that as that man, uh, they needed to get him into that house. His friends came and picked him up and brought him on the roof. And they tore out and they began to lower him down. And at that moment, Jesus said, rise and walk. That word press to me has carried me through these last couple weeks. And then there was the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. And the Bible says that she came to herself and she says, I've got to get through. And they pressed in around yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. They pressed in yeah. around. Him. And at that moment, all she had to do was reach out and touch him because she'd come to the determination in herself that if she could just reach out and touch him. That she would be made whole. Yep. And the Lord spoke to me about two things that you have in your life. One, you've got yourself. Sometimes you've got to make the determination in and of yourself. You're going to press towards God. You're going to make it happen no matter what it takes. When you get up and the enemy is against you to come to church. I'm sorry. And the world's against you to come to church. And you listen to everything and it is against you. Mm. But I am telling you, if you would just press and press through the crowd and yeah. press through everything and just touch him. The second is this. You got friends. And if you don't have friends, you can make friends. And I'm telling you, you are not alone in this church and in this congregation. There have been times when I have just been beside myself, but I've got friends. Yes. And they've carried yes. me through and they prayed with me. And my pastors called me and prayed with me. And I'm telling you, it's at that moment that they tore off the thatches of the house yeah. and they lowered me down yeah. and they got me to the feet of Jesus and he yes. could heal me. Yes. And I'm thankful for everybody in this congregation today. I, I praise you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray right now on that, when you're, when you're walking forward, I feel such a specific, when we're walking forward, we can be dragging things behind us. We can be dragging grief. 
We can be dragging sorrows. We can be dragging. So we look good and we're walking forward and we're pressing towards that mark, but we're going slow because we're dragging stuff from behind us. And it's not, it's not hooked to us hard. It's just a, 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 just a small something, but we're still just walking with a limp and walking slow. We're still going towards Jesus, but there's something dragging us. And I speak right now, if you're feeling that, that sorrow, that grief, Oh, those things, that anxiety, those things of, I'm trying to press forward. I'm trying to get to the crowd. I'm trying to get to Jesus. But there's those things in my past that I still hold on to, and I'm still dragging them forward. And I'm speaking right now to a break in that in Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah, a break in that. I'm speaking freedom right now. Freedom. I'm speaking an axe right now to whatever that is that connects you to that thing that you have been dragging. I speak it right now. Jesus' name, an axe to that. Hallelujah, it is cut off by the blood. And when you look back and you say, but I've been comfortable dragging that with me. I want you to look with new eyes. You're going to see the blood. You're going to see death. And you're going to say, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that. That is unclean. I don't want to go back to that anymore. I don't want to drag that. And you're going to instead walk forward with that lightness in your step. Hallelujah. And you're going to keep pressing forward no longer dragging anything behind you in Jesus name and today is different you've tried to cut this off before but I'm telling you right now it is today today is different today there is that breaking and you need to say within yourself it is broken and I believe it and I claim it in Jesus name amen amen Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Martha, there's a little more in there. Did you know that? Did you know that? Well, there is. Yeah, there is. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Yeah, something else in there. Yeah. Yeah. I just speak a newness right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says he leads us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake and his name's sake, God. And I pray right now that he's not just leading us, God, just in a little walk, God, but I speak joy in yeah. the journey. Yeah. Yeah. I speak joy yeah. Yeah. that we're not just going to walk on that path, but we're going to dance. Yeah. We're going to skip some days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking joy, joy not of this world, <laughs> hallelujah, God, but your joy, Lord, your peace, your strength. I speak that right yeah. now, that we're going to have so much going forward that we're not going to want to look back on those things mm. of the past. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, amen. I thought there wasn't in there. Nothing in there? You sure? Hold on, yes. Amen. <laughs> Thank Amen. you, guys. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Glory. And I know what it's like for a visiting pastor not to want to be noticed because they're on vacation. Okay? But we will have him here soon to preach. Amen. Well, don't, don't get so excited. Maybe I won't have him back. I thought you might. <laughs> Boy, you're kind of loud for somebody who doesn't want to be noticed, honey. You sure you don't want to say something, guys? Huh? Yeah. So how many more days in your vacation? Two. One. Two? One. <laughs> they need another vacation. They can't agree on how many days are left. Today's not over yet, so. Huh. Huh. All right. Well, thank you. Good to see you, Pastor Same Paul. here, Pastor. Good Same to see here. You up and about. Same here. Pastor Carolyn, we love you guys. And uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, 
Like Pastor Puss said, I, I didn't really want to get up here, but we knew we were going to. Which we knew that he couldn't resist. It's well, just, it's not it's in his nature. Yeah, not in my nature, no. <laughs> but I, I just want to encourage you guys. Uh, we're, we're on vacation, so you know we're not at our home church, and we don't have to be at any church right. today. But we chose to come here because we believe in what God is doing here at Harvest Church. Amen. Yep. And I want to encourage you. You are in a life-giving body of Christ uh, right here it. at Harvest Church with good Pastor Paul and Pastor Carolyn. Amen. Good way Don't to take it. it for granted. Yep. Don't be like, you know, the, the average person who wakes up in the morning and goes, eh. Do I feel like going to church? Is everything right? You know, make a decision. This is good for you. And take it from me as a pastor. It is good for your pastor to have you here. It's not about numbers, but it's just more fun when there's people in the room. And the more people in the room, the more fun it is, you know, because this guy has got a word from the Lord to share with you. And he's got a, the more people he gets to share it with, the, the better he goes home feeling. That's right. So the next time you're tempted, and I'm not talking about when you're on vacation. When you're on vacation, you should be away or you, should, you know, whatever. But the next time you're tempted on a Sunday morning to go, eh, I don't feel like coming out this morning. Do I've it. said that. Me too. Me too. Absolutely. Thank you for admitting it was only that. Me. No, it's not just you. But the next time you feel like not coming out, just come out. Come out because your pastor will be blessed. Your pastoral family will be blessed. Yes. Amen. There's somebody in the congregation who needs to see you there yeah. that morning. Yeah. That's why the devil, like like brother, like brother just said, that's why the devil will fight you and try to keep you out yeah. of here. Because he knows that God, he knows that God has a plan for each one of us. Okay. You may not be preaching that morning, but God has a blessing yeah. for you to deliver to somebody else. Yeah. It could just be a smile. It could be a handshake at the door, a hug. Yeah. But know that you have a, God has a plan for your life too. Amen. Great folks, great pastors. So let, let's go over to Mark four. I'm serious. I never tell jokes. You know better than that. Go over here to Mark 4. I'm not going to start from the beginning. I'm going to move down. Last week we did the same thing. Mark 4. Now I want you to say this about the seed. Say the seed. The seed, the seed carries the instructions for manifestation. Say the seed. the seed. Carries what? Come on. The instruction. So when you put a seed in the natural into the ground... There's an expectancy that what it says on the package will produce what? Exactly. After its own kind. Am I correct? So every promise in the word of God, and there's thousands of them, is a seed. I want you to look at it this way. This is a package of seeds. It's loaded. Say it's loaded. Say it's a seed package. If you need a seed package on healing, what should you do? Go find scriptures on healing. If some of you are in financial dilemmas, what should you do? I know what to do. I'm a pastor. First thing you do is start tithing and giving God his portion that he's blessed you with. Well, I don't, I don't want to. Uh, well, listen, I'm telling you what the word says. He's got to be first. Say first and foremost. A tithe, offering, that's how it works. And then what happens when you do it God's way? It always comes back to you. Say back to you. How many of you love people? When you love people, guess what? Love's going to come back to you. Say love is coming back to me. Amen. So go over here to Mark 4 for a minute. And the Lord uh, let some things into my spirit. Um, uh, 27. And then it continues sleeping and rises night and day. Well, the seed sprouts and grows and increasing. What does the seed do? Say it sprouts and what? Grows and increases. So when you put, let's say you had some money, you put it into an account where you're guaranteed so much money. What's it doing when you don't see it? It's increasing. Everything increases. Say everything increases. The word of God is looking for fertile ground your heart and my heart, so it can be placed in there, so it can increase. Say increase. increase. 
Look at the next one. The earth produces acting by itself, first the blade, say the blade, then the ear, and then the full grain on the ear. But right about now is the time of the year when you can see those stalks of corn doing what? Growing, they're getting bigger. And some of the farmers will plant, I think, for the feed. Others, you and I will go eat. If I have to have corn, you know what kind I want? I want the white sweet corn. Oh, say yeah, say yeah. So if you drive by, just drop it off at the church. Be glad to help you out. Amen. But we don't know how it happens, but what happens? You go to bed, you wake up, and it's still growing. And the, the farmer does not know, or the person planting his garden doesn't know how. But the responsibility is what? To water that, care for it, and it's guaranteed to what? Produce the word of God. Say the word of God. Every scripture verse is guaranteed to produce. Say produce. Let's go a little bit further, can we? All right, here we go now. It produces, look at verse 29. And when the grain is ripe and permits, immediately sends forth the reapers and puts the sickle because the harvest stands ready. Now notice what it says. Immediately he sends forth the reaper. Why? Because it's ready. Say it's ready. Sometimes when we put seed into the ground of our heart and believing it by faith, it's not ready to be, hello, produced. We have to wait, what? A little bit longer. Say just a little bit longer. Amen. Now listen to verse um, number 30. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? And what parable shall we use to illustrate and explain it? So what Jesus is doing, he's going back and he's still talking about the kingdom of God. When he landed here on planet earth, and what was he doing? Talking about the kingdom of God. Now, get ready. Go over here. Uh, First Kings, but... Uh, don't open the Bible yet. First Kings, uh, verse, uh, verse, chapter 17, 18. I want to read you something out of James, if you don't mind. James, the fifth chapter, a couple of different translations. Uh, think, for verses 13 through 18, but the bottom of 18. Think of Elijah, a man with feelings just like you and I. Say he's a man. That's what the word says. What? Just like you and I. I need somebody to do some calisthenics. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. There we go. Turn to your neighbor and say hallelujah. hallelujah. He's a man like what? You and I. Well, he was a prophet. The word says he's a prophet, but at the same time, you and I are just like him. He's a man who heard God and did what he told him to do. Say hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to some of these different translations. Elijah was a man like us, subject to the same weaknesses. Elijah was a human being like nature and constitution as us. Elijah was only a man like us. Whoa. Elijah was a man just like us. Another scripture. Elijah was instant, was human being, just like you and I. So what is the scripture telling us? You and I are a carrier of the word and if we'll open our mouth up, something supernatural is going to begin to happen. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you a few more if you don't mind. He was only a man like ourselves, but when he prayed, see, when he what? He did, he prayed. You can have the ingredients for something that you're making, but unless you take and put it to a recipe, it's just a bunch of things standing there. Amen. So what happened? When you and I pray, we put all the ingredients, say, together. Amen. It, say, oh my God. He was a human being like us. Listen to this translation. Elijah was only a man like ourselves, but when he prayed fervently, that is, might not rain, no rain fell upon the earth for three and a half years. But what happened after three and a half years? He pulled out prayer and then what? Spoke that it would now rain. That's what can happen if your mouth and my mouth is connected to the word of God. He will let the seed of what you and I are speaking to become a supernatural reality. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Let me read a couple more translations. That's good. Then he prayed again, this time that it would rain and down it poured and the grass turned green and the gardens began to grow again. And again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops and the earth did what? Gave itself fruit. Say fruit. fruit. Now I want you to hear this because I've been around a couple of years, I think. Yeah. But I have a book. Uh, I was looking at it the other day. And it's entitled, Who Changed Things? Connie, a little chuckle there. 
Who changed things? When did it, when did it come to the point where Jesus is just not enough? When did that change? I'm looking at my lifetime. I've been around a couple of years and I'm looking and I'm seeing how things have gradually changed very, very, very slowly, but they've changed. Today, what I call church and what other pastors call churches, it, they, they're called the church, but many times they're not even preaching the gospel anymore. They've let so much of the world in, you can't tell the difference between the world and the church. I can tell you what a real church looks like. It's a church that's not ashamed to preach the good news of the gospel, not afraid to talk about the blood, not afraid to talk about people getting healed, set free and delivered. I'm telling you, it's there for the taking, but more people, are pastors sometimes, are interested in drawing the crowd. There's lots of ways to draw a crowd, but when you draw by the word of God and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, things are gonna change. Say, things are gonna change. I remember when I was in, in, in uh, the Bronx ministering as a youth pastor, and we were starting praying for this one lady, and we took her in the, in the pastor's office right during the service, and nobody knew what was going on. All of a sudden, demons started talking out of her. There's a service going on here, and then there was something going on here. She had so many demons in her, it was unbelievable. But she was out there singing and praising God. But in the meantime, there was something going on on the inside. And the Holy Ghost allowed us to see that and identify it. And we cast that demon out of her. Amen. The last time I heard, she was fine, has a family and everything else. So right under our noses, something could be going on that needs attention. And we have to give attention. Don't let the traditions of church and the traditions of what man is doing affect what God wants to do. The scripture verse is very plain. It said, and led by the spirit. We have to be led more than ever today by the spirit of God on a daily basis. There are so many choices, so many avenues of information coming your way and my way. We've got to be able to sift it. When I was a kid, my mom always used to bake and she'd have a sifter and she'd say, okay, Paul, put this in there and sift it. And I go back and forth like this and it would take the stuff they didn't want in there out, but made just the stuff they needed. So we have to learn how to sift with the help of the Holy Ghost. Say what? We need to sift the stuff that doesn't belong and we need to speak holy the word of God. Listen to some of these quotes if you don't mind. Duncan Campbell, great man. Today we have a Christianity made easy as an accommodation to an age that is unwilling to face the implications of Calvary and the gospel of simply believism. What does that mean? All things are possible, just believe it. It's produced a harvest of professions which have done untold harm to the cause of Christ. Give you another one. John Piper, great man of God. Do you have a hunger for God if you don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God? It's not because we have drunk Listen now, we have not drunk deeply and are satisfied. It's because we have nibbled so long at the table of the world, our soul is stuffed with small things and there's no room for the great things. We can't nibble anymore at the word of God and take, oh, I did my devotional this morning. I'm telling you, it's time we jump in and we get as much as we can of God. There's too much nibbling going on. Now I'm Italian, I can tell you. Italians don't nibble. They sample it in the kitchen. They sample it on the way out. And by the time it gets there, uh, what happened to lunch? Oh, we're having lunch today? It doesn't make it out of the kitchen. Am I right, John? Yes. Listen to me. We've got to stop nibbling at the word of God and what God wants to do and realize we're eating too much of the world without even knowing about it. And we're nibbling on the word. That's not gonna get us to where we have to go. That's not going to help us in a time of need. We've got to devour the word of God. We've got to chew on it. We've got to put it in us and give a spiritual nourishment. Somebody ought to say something right about that. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I want you to turn over to Kings. Can you do that real quick? Turn over to Kings. I want you to see something. Because here's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. What's that? Okay, good. I thought I was hearing my echo somewhere. First Kings. And chapter, if you don't mind, number 18. There's so much in this chapter, there's no way I'm going to preach it. But the Lord just spoke very plainly to me. Go up to verse uh, 41. You ready? And Elijah said to Ahab, go up 
eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Look at me. Every seed has an abundance in it. Say it out loud. Every seed has an abundance. So when the prophet spoke to his servant, what happened? He was speaking, listen now, something that was already done. Say it was already done. Now I'm going to help some of you this morning. Say, pastor, will you help me? If you'll listen to the spirit, listen. So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he bowed itself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. What was he doing? Say he's praying. Say he's praying. Hallelujah. Uh, my, my mother-in-law, uh, between her and her, her sister, Marge, my God, Grace and Marge, there was always a spot where there was a Bible on their bed and they would kneel in that spot every day, praying for their children. That's why our family is where it is. That's why my sister-in-law's family is where it is, because a mom was praying. Amen. Hallelujah. I think they're still probably talking from up there, maybe. Now listen, look at verse 43. And he said to the servant, say he said to the servant, say it out loud. He said to the servant. So what was he saying? What was he saying? Get, get ready. Get, say, get ready. Look at me, everybody. Inside the seed, inside every scripture verse is an already done. If you could open up a package of seed, you know how you get a fortune cookie and you open it up? Every seed needs to be opened up. And inside the seed is the manifestation of what that seed is to produce. Get ready now. This just Holy Ghost just spoke this to me when I was coming up the hallway. Wow. And listen to what the servant said. And he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. Elijah said, go again seven times. Look at me. This is what happens to us, all of us. We pray the scripture and nothing happens. So we say, well, not going to work. What did he tell the servant to do? Go back again. Go back again. What's the number seven mean? Perfection. Go back again. Say, go back again. Have you ever pulled the scripture verse out and spoke it by faith? And then you see nothing happening. Go like this. It's a trick of the enemy. He wants you to think, well, I prayed and nothing happened. Uh, here, here we go now. Don't say, uh, Pastor, I won't get upset. I probably listen. Many times our prayers are not the word. They're prayers we come up with. If we're not praying the word, then there'll be nothing that can be reproduced. Amen. It's got to be the word. See, it's the word and only the word. Nothing else. This person said this. This person said this. This person said this. All that's nice. But unless we pray the word, some people have prayed for folks in their family to be saved for years, but they don't pray the word. They make it one time pass. You keep praying and you keep praying and you keep praying. How many, hey, what was that? How many people they believe uh, somebody gets prayed for before they get saved 70 times? Witness to? They believe over 70 times a person is spoken to by somebody else and then it hits. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Who's witnessing to somebody right now and you're not seeing anything going on? Anybody? Keep going. Keep going and keep going because that ground is being broken up. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to finish this today because we can't, but I'm getting ready to. Fair enough? Say hallelujah, pastor. Hallelujah. At the seventh time, the servant said, a cloud as small as a man's hand is arising out of the sea. King James is a fist. And Elijah said, go up, say to Ahab, hitch your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. Understand, no, no rain's coming, but it is coming. Say this, it's a done deal. It's not that it might happen. Say, it's not that it might happen. It's not that it could happen. Say this, it's a done deal. Every seed, every scripture verse has already been fulfilled. Inside every scripture verse for healing, for salvation, 
for whatever you have a need has already, say this, has already been done. Say already been done. It's not a maybe word. Well, I pray, I hope it works. No, don't bother praying. You pray the word. Remember the, the angel Gabriel, Mary, if you'll just believe all things are what? Turn to your neighbor and say, all things are possible. All things are possible. In a little while, the heavens were black and wind swept clouds and there was a great rain and Ahab went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord says on Elijah, he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab at the entrance of Je She was 20 some miles away. What did the prophet do? He ran. Say he ran. Guess what? Who's been praying for something for a long time? Or two weeks? Or two days? Somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I have an issue with my ankle. Dr. Joey over there can confirm this. I've been to one of his doctors. The doctor said that it's just bone on bone. He said the only thing he can do is cut it out and put a new ankle in. But I'm believing that it's going to be totally healed. Supernatural healing by Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Because Jesus said in Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive yep. them. Yep. Yep. And you shall have them. Bye. And I've got it. Pastor, is that you too? Yes. I do this every day. I'm running the spirit realm. Who else has a word? Has a scripture verse? You have a promise you've been waiting on God for. Come on. Say this out loud. I have a now word. The scripture is a now word. Say it out loud. Say it again. Now word. Say this out loud. It's a done deal word. Say it's a done deal word. Give me the scripture verse. And go. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. In my family's life, my life, my business, my parents' life, um, we are just 100% believing that everything that is going on in our lives is changed and transformed for the glory of God. And again, now to him who was able to do yep. far more yep. exceedingly abundantly yep. above what yep. I can ask or think. So these things are done in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's what we agree. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Every time you put a scripture in your mouth and begin to speak that out of your mouth, what happens is that sound of that seed speaks abundance. Say it, it's abundance. it's abundance. Say this, it's power. it's power. The word of God is released by faith. Yes. Somebody else. Amen. Come on, somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Who built the wall? Nehemiah. A trowel in one hand and a sword in the other hand. That's how you walk through life. You walk doing what you're supposed to do, but make sure the word is in your other hand and you begin to speak it by faith. Say, speak it by faith. Every time you quote a scripture verse, and I do, I hear the sound of. Say it a lot. I hear the sound of. But what if it doesn't work? That kind of prayer won't allow the seed to grow. All right. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of what is not yet manifested to us, but it's manifested already in the spirit realm. Say it's done. Don't look at something and say it's impossible. Remember a few weeks ago or a month ago, I said this, that Goliath, how many of you face Goliaths? Produce Davids. Say Goliath produce Davids. So when a Goliath comes along, say, oh, now what am I gonna do? Do exactly what David did. What did David do? He ran in with what? The word of God. All the Israeli army ran as soon as they heard the giant. Hello, if I can help you. As soon as they saw the giant. 
But what did David go? 15 year old kid. He came with the word of God. Where was the word? In his mouth. Who is, say this out loud, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That means when somebody comes against the word that you speak, hello, speak, guess what? Hallelujah. The word is, where's, where's Nico? Come here. Come here. Yeah, that's interesting. Wasn't planning on doing that. You don't mind, do you? He's worked some jobs. He's got another job now. We don't tell you where. But he doesn't swear on the job. Amen. Say, what? Tell him what happened. Which one? Which one? You have more? Well, next week we can use another one. When they said, how come you don't swear? Oh, yeah. oh. I think last year. Last year. Oh, there's more going on this year? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Go to the Lord has for me. Amen. Um, I was just, I think it was only like a few weeks into my internship last year. And um, they were just like, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And that's happened before now at this new job. Mm. But pretty much everywhere I go. It's not that hard to stick out these days. But, um, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm a Christian and, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that. You know, I stand on the word. And, yeah. And uh, I, I just kind of gave my, gave a little testimony. And, you know, people are like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And, you know, it's nice to see. I think it's different in like a school setting. Everyone can get a little like, oh, <laughs> I won't talk to you anymore. But in like yeah. the work, in the workplace and people everyone could tell that everyone has a hunger for something and if they see something different they're they're like in, interested by it yeah. so mm. it's pretty cool so hallelujah we'll save one that's this year for next week sounds good Amen. <laughs> isn't that wonderful say hallelujah uh, who's going to be my next runner i'm telling you it will change once you come up here and then you run saying out of your mouth i got it's already done come on Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Already done. Say it's already done. Come on up. Train up a child in the way they should go. Oh. And when they're old, they will not depart. Amen. One here, one more coming. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Train up a child in the way they should go. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry, I don't have my memorized. It, I actually came to me this morning as my family and I have been Real in loud. a struggle. We've been in a bit of a struggle and we're praying for healing for our daughter. Yes, Lord. <laughs> May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the mm -hmm. sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all of your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God, yes. set up your, our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now... I know that the Lord saves his anointed and he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. So trust in chariot, some trust in chariots and mm -hmm. some in horses, yeah. but yeah. we trust in the yeah. name of our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Somebody else. Come on, somebody else. I got a few minutes here. Come on. Come on. Um, the word says, the Lord make me rich, he add no sorrow to it. I don't remember where it is right now, but that is a scripture. Okay. And I just believe God that I'm rich in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are, honey. You are. Hallelujah. 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 How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm standing on Isaiah 53, 4, 5. Yes. By your stripes, we were healed. Yes. Hallelujah. And what does it say in James? We are just like Elijah. He was a man like you and I. It worked for him. You don't have to be a prophet. It'll work for you. Because when you speak it, you're activating the word of God. 
if I'm wrong in this, help me. But you buy a battery sometime, when I was a kid anyway, and they had to activate the battery by putting acid in it. Am I correct? So unless the acid went in there, that battery didn't work. I'm telling you, the word of God will cause whatever you believe in him for come to pass. You may go back and same scripture, same scripture. And you, oh God, I'm telling you, you keep going back to that. Keep claiming salvation for your family. Keep claiming your finances to turn around. I'm telling you, that job you've been waiting for has been waiting for you and I to open up your mouth and say, where does promotion come from? I just told somebody the other day, there's a promotion probably maybe coming. I said to very clearly out of the word, promotion is coming to you because someone else is being promoted. Ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. Uh -huh. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Yes. Hallelujah. Go ahead and make a lap for me. Come on. I got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes, body, you are healed. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Spirit's starting to move. Come on. You want to be set free. This is the place. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Come on up, son. How are you, baby? Looking good. I like those sneaks. Thank you. Coach, you got to see these sneaks. Go ahead. Scripture verse. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You are in the right place at the right time where the presence of God is. That's where you'll find your safety. Amen. All right? I know you know Jesus. And he's been longing to sit down and have a conversation with you. All right? Do a lap. Come on. Um, it's John 16, 13 and James 1, 5. The spirit of truth abides in me and teaches me all things, and he guides me into truth. Therefore, I confess I have perfect knowledge of every situation and every circumstance in life, for I have the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Okay. Yep, I got it. Um, for the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Luke 15, 24. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. My friend David, how are you? Good. I had to bring this up to get it right. That's all right. Okay, let me find it. <laughs> this came this morning. I just touched my Bible and the scripture came to my mind, which mm. it has several times. Uh, where are you? Okay, I'm not a fast reader. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, mm -hmm. and to overcome all the mm -hmm. power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, David. Nothing. Nothing. You're a good man. You. You're a great man. You. And beyond that. Thank you. Go ahead, do your lap. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, stand right where you are. Next week, we're probably going to be doing the same thing. I'm telling you, you can see how things are beginning to move it's going to already be moving when we walk into this next week. Turn to the person next to you and ask him if they know Jesus Christ is their Lord and their Savior. Go ahead. If not, come on up to the altar. Come on up to the altar. You find somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Maybe somebody wants to rededicate their life. Doesn't matter. Anybody. You're watching uh, by television, internet, however you want to get to the place where we are. I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you, cares about you. And I want you to know you can receive Christ too. Our church will pray a prayer with you right now. They'll join with me and say this if you don't mind. Jesus, Jesus forgive me of my sins. Me. Come into my life and change me. Change. The scripture says this. Old things are passed away. Everything is becoming brand new in Jesus' name. Harvest, give them a, give them a welcome call. Come on. <laughs> 